I've got quite a few projects littered around the workshop now. Well, not really now, kind of always, but in one form or another, they're all in need of something. And a bit of a clean is pretty high on the list for most of them. I am somewhat limited by the size of my workshop, so I don't want to fill it with too many tools that are specific to one job. Say something like a blasting cabinet or a parts washer, for example. But a bunch of these projects do need cleaning before they can progress any further. Whilst some of them are small and would fit within a blasting cabinet, some of them are a bit bigger. And some of them are in between. So a while ago I bought this portable soda blaster, but right from the beginning I was already wary of its small capacity and its tendency to do this. So I made this instead. So this idea has been playing on my mind for quite a while, but the catalyst for finally doing something about it is this car, and this manifold, and this, and this as well. I don't think I'll go back to the factory airbox, but I'm sure something can be done about this cold air intake while I'm at it. The story goes that these manifolds are meant to be good for forced induction, but that's not something this car has or is likely to have, so I'll be going back to the stock manifold. Unfortunately, I think this one spent a fair bit of time outside after being removed, so the outside's not great, but nor is the inside. Oil in the intake system in these cars is not uncommon, however, this does seem a little bit excessive. I will address it before putting the manifold back on the car, but for now, my main concern is this outside surface here and removing the residue that's on the inside. I'll probably do something about these ugly bolts while I'm at it, but you might need to stick around for the next video for that one. If you're wondering, yes, I did just open this for the first time for the sake of this video, even knowing that I probably won't ever use it. However, for the sake of the exercise and a bit of benchmarking, let's have a look and see how this one works. It's just a very simple gravity fed design. You fill the hopper with your media. This valve here controls how much media falls down within the tube and it's pushed out by the compressed air. Pretty simple. However, like I alluded to in the intro, I don't think this hopper is large enough. The fact that it does this drives me crazy. So before I begin designing the new one, there's a few things I want to consider. The main one is that it will be used predominantly as a soda blaster rather than a sand blaster, and I won't be containing any of the wasted media, so I'd like something that's biodegradable, non-toxic, all that sort of thing. However, this commercial one you can see here has a relatively coarse grit, and for most things I'm sure that'll do the job, but I would like to use something a little bit more fine. And I may have stolen this from the kitchen. Bicarb soda or baking soda for the Americans is another commonly used media. And you can see here that it's a much finer grit than the commercial soda blasting media that I bought. Just don't confuse it with baking powder. Um, baking... Baking soda, soda, not baking powder. Because baking powder guys will have muffins growing out of their noses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy. So that I don't contaminate our cooking supplies, I'll put a little bit of a sample here in a Ziploc bag. But essentially my concept would be that this would be sucked through a vacuum hose that could be put in a container of any size. This would mean that you wouldn't be as restricted as you are with the hopper on the gravity fed design of the other soda blaster and you could essentially run it into almost anything. Just trim the edge here so that there's a wider opening for the media to be sucked through and that will be able to test both the bicarb and the commercial soda blasting media. So I'll get the commercial one set up and ready to test and in the meantime I'll get started on designing the new one. I'm not sure if you might be here for a bit of a physics lesson, so if you're not, here it is in fast forward. But if you are a little bit interested, I'll go back and start again, because it is pretty cool, but otherwise feel free to jump ahead. I wanted something that would just fit over the end of a regular air hose, so that's what you can see here. And as the air flows through, it speeds up as it's squeezed through the opening in the middle there. I won't get too deep into the physics, but this is called a venturi, and it speeds up the airflow even further. This increased airflow creates a vacuum behind it and as such pulls air through the secondary opening you can see at the bottom there. We then attach a hose to that inlet and put the other end in the media. As the vacuum pulls the air and the media through, it's combined in the centre of the chamber there and throws it out the end at whatever you're pointing it at. As you can see I went through a couple of different design iterations, most of them centred around where I actually put the vacuum pickup. Although the physics is relatively simple, creating a design that works well for 3D printing was a little bit more challenging and I made a couple of mistakes. In the end though, I settled on this design and I'm pretty happy with it. The main compromise was essentially in the mixing chamber and that was between the inlet for the compressed air and the inlet for the vacuum. I had to ensure that there was a large enough gap to allow the media to get past that inlet and out the end without clogging up the line. 
Once that was done, I just got it ready for 3D printing and got it cooking. And here it is, a bit smaller than what it looked like on the screen and a lot smaller than the other one. I did design a little step at the back here in case it needed to be taped up to ensure that it was a tight fit, but it actually fits perfectly without any tape there. This vacuum hose that I'm attaching now is actually another design limitation as that's all that I actually had on hand. So we may have an issue with the larger grit of the commercial soda blasting media, but we'll see how we go. Just marking this out now into four quadrants so we can test out the two different soda blasters and the two different types of media. Top left will be the commercial blaster and the commercial soda, followed by my blaster and the commercial soda, commercial blaster and the bicarb, and my blaster and the bicarb. So we can basically even tell from there that the difference between the two was almost negligible. However, the commercial blaster did release a lot more media than what my one did, but it was also controllable via the valve. As I also suspected might happen, the commercial blasting media did have a bit of a tougher time actually making it through the outlet. This could be easily rectified by having a larger vacuum hose and actually making the unit itself larger, in which case I'm fully confident it would be as proficient as the commercial one in flowing the media. That said, when using the bicarb soda, they were much more on par with one another. But in reality, the main problem with both of them was just that they're not the right tool for this job. Having a closer look at the side-by-side -side comparison, we can see that the difference between the two units and the two different type of media is basically negligible. Whilst the commercial one was a bit quicker at removing a lot of the grime, it was also flowing a lot more of the media. In the video you just watched, I used basically half of that 5 kilo container to get the manifolds to this point. And for the mess it made, the time it took, and the amount of media that I went through, I stand by my reasoning that it was probably not the right tool for this job. However, from a purely comparative point of view, I'm fully confident that the one that I've designed is easily as good as the commercial one. It obviously doesn't have the adjustability that the commercial unit does. However, when I reduced that flow on the commercial unit, it basically performed identically to the one I designed. That said, I think I'll invest in some larger vacuum lines so that I can increase the flow of my unit. In the meantime though, let me know what you think and if you'd be interested in seeing a part two. Thanks for watching.